Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to morning prayer. Let us begin. Worthy are you, O Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Let us pray. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Divinity. O oh, come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his and he made it. His hands mold the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Psalms appointed for today are Psalms 137 and 144. Psalm 137 By the waters of Babylon we sat down and wept when we remembered you, O Zion. As for our harps, we hung them up on the trees in the midst of that land. For those who led us away asked us for a song and our oppressors called for mirth. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song upon an alien soil? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my highest joy. Remember the day of Jerusalem, O Lord, against the people of Edom, who said, Down with it, down with it, even to the ground. O daughter of Babylon, doomed to destruction, happy the one who pays you back for what you have done to us. Happy shall he be who takes your little ones and dashes them against the rock. Psalm 144 Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hands to fight and fingers to battle. My help and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I trust, who subdues the people under me. O Lord, 
what are we that you should care for us? Mere mortals that you should think of us. We are like a puff of wind. Our days are like a passing shadow. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Hurl the lightning and scatter them. Shoot out your arrows and rout them. Stretch out your hand from on high. Rescue me and deliver me from the great waters, from the hand of foreign peoples. Whose mouths speak deceitfully and whose right hand is raised in falsehood. O God, I will sing to you a new song. I will play to you on a ten-stringed lyre. You give victory to kings and have rescued David, your servant. Rescue me from the hurtful sword and deliver me from the hands of foreign people. Whose mouths speak deceitfully and whose right hand is raised in falsehood. May our sons be like plants well nurtured from their youth and our daughters like sculptured corners of a palace. May our bands be filled to overflowing at all manner of crops. May the flocks in our pastures increase by thousands and tens of thousands. May our cattle be fat and sleek. May there be no breaching of walls, no going into exile, no wailing in the public squares. Happy, Happy are, are the, the people of whom, whom this is so. Happy are, are the people whose, whose God is the Lord. Lord. Glory be to the Father, and and to the Son, and and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was was in the beginning, beginning, is is now, and and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The Benedictus. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant, David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of all to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us to show mercy to our forebears and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, The dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the Gospel according to Luke. Chapter 6, verses 27 to 38. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for He is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, 
just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus really puts us in some hard positions a lot of the times, doesn't he? He is here pointing at us to do better, to be the bigger person. You know, if you if you like me that likes to play petty games, um, or or somewhat petty in your thinking, he here he say, taking it to a whole other limit. Love your enemies, and that expression of loving your enemies, he is even more forward or pointed in in describing for us what that looks like. And, and when you think about it, it is really him showing us what our Christianity should look like. What our walk with him should look like. He says, love your enemies, do good to those who hurt you. Pray for them who are, who, who, who are up against you. If somebody hits you, turn the next cheek. If they take your coat, give them your shirt as well. And, uh, you know, it, it goes on. But, but here he's pointing at what love really looks like. Because it's very easy to love those who love you, but it's even harder. And, and when I say even harder, Jesus never calls us to remain in the same position that we're at. He always, he's always challenging us to improve on ourselves, to strengthen our resolve, to step up another level. And so he says, love those who don't love you back. Love those who hate you. And it's so hard to do that. So hard. Because you want to be like everybody else. But he does not call us to be like everybody else. He does not call us to continue the same negative Ruth route that everyone else is going down. He calls us to walk a different road. And when you think about it in a practical sense, when you share love to others who are wicked and evil and mean, it tempers them. This is where I said, it's calling us to be the bigger person, to be the bigger person in the situation. Because we all recognize, we who are his believers, we who are his followers recognize that there's a better way to act. And we all don't have to go down into the gutter, as we would call it. And so he says, Pray for them. And your prayer is not that they will die or suffer or some sort of thing like that, but that they will see the error of their ways, that they will come to know God in a better way, that they will, whatever is whatever has hurt them on their life's journey, because again, I'll remind us, hurt people hurt other people. So when people are hurt and have not dealt with their hurt, they tend to reciprocate hurt or share hurt to others. And so if we understand that, then that should help us to understand, help us to act differently. This is the empathy that comes. They may not have that knowledge. They may not have that strength to do better. They may not know how to do better. And so this is where we must not respond the same way that they are responding, but respond with kindness, respond with care, respond with love, respond with peace, respond with the love of Christ. And so God is calling us to be the bigger person. He says, bless those who curse you. Don't be like them and curse back. That's not who you are as a believer or follower of Christ. He says, pray for those who abuse you. Pray that they will see the error of their ways. Pray that they will be tempered. Pray that whatever causes them to act like this, they will be able to resolve. 
pray that they would find another way of expressing themselves, not in an abusive way, in a violent way. He did not say stay and take the abuser. He says pray for them. Pray for them. Pray that God will help them. Pray that they will allow God to help them. Pray that they will see and walk and, and draw closer to God. So there's 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 a lot of things that there are a lot of things that we can be doing. And then he says, if anyone strikes you on the cheek. Now this is hard because I mean it's a hard slap you get. You just get a hard lash on your cheek. My nice cheek. My nice cheek. That is now swollen and swelling and red. Turn the other one like I had to get at twice. He's not meaning for you to in to receive abuse, but pointing us that we don't retaliate in kind. That there's no need to respond the same way that person has responded to you. I mean, and many of us, after responding in, in, in like the same way, we regret later we should not have done that. Especially if somebody else gets hurt. Temper the situation bring it down don't escalate it because it could turn into a big fight somebody falls hits their head somebody gets damaged as well as not being able to take back that reaction so anything we put forward we're not able to take back because we're not people of the past we're people of, of the future and so we have to think about how we respond to each other how we respond in situations and how we deal and live with each other and so he says Whoever takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. You should not be so attached to the material things that you are you are mad and upset that they take me, they take it, they let it go. And you know, I think about us sometimes when somebody tries to rob us, and the first thing we want to do is fight. We want to fight. We want to hold on to it. We want to, we want to put up a, 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 a defense because it's mine and I'm not letting it go. And you have to kill me for this. And, and then you are desperately injured. And what is going to happen to you now? You're fighting for a phone, a chain, a, a vehicle. Secure yourself. Save your life. Don't respond in kind. We have to make sense of the things. And again, not escalate situations, but tone it down. And, and is why I say he's calling us to be the bigger person. He's calling us to be the adult, the one with the, with the logic, the one who makes sense of the situation, the one who is going to make him proud. If we recognize Jesus' walk on earth, he could have come, I would say, guns ablaze. He could have come ready to fight physically to save the people who protect but that's not what he came to do he, he taught us a new and right way to live there's no need for us to be jealous of each other there's no need for us to be after each other's well there's no need for us to try to lord or be powerful over the other person there's no need we're all equal he loves us all the same way and there's so much of us that need help love tenderness attention and so with, if, if we understood those things, then we would not be fighting for space and power, but we would be trying to take care of each other. Recognizing that we're all one. And so he came walking and teaching and guiding us on how we ought to live. And so in this particular case, he says, love your enemies. Love your enemies. And if you consider it, these are all enemies. And it, it's, it's the example he uses. He talks about abuse. He talks about somebody stealing something or taking something of yours. And he uses a, a coat and says, give your shirt. But it may not happen to you, but there are other things. People who hurt you you've blacklisted them and so therefore they've become your enemies people who have said things that you don't like you've made them your enemy and so he's saying don't respond the same way be the bigger person 
in your life, you will encounter many things. And you may have already encountered many things. But how we respond to life situations determines the type of persons that we become or mature into. And so he's trying to push us to be mature Christians and proving or showing us how we ought to live, how we ought to be with each other. You know, doesn't this remind you of his sermon on the Mount with the Beatitudes where he says, blessed are the poor. Let me read it for you. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, Matthew chapter 5, 3 to 12. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the gentle. Blessed are those who hung and thirst for what is right. Blessed are the merciful. And so Jesus gives us different ways of trying to, to help us to understand how we ought to be living as believers, as kingdom people, as people who have been adopted into his fold, as people who are his followers, his disciples, as people who are obedient and desirous of that relationship with him. And so he, he's very direct. He says, love your enemies. Be the bigger person. Don't respond in kind. But allow the situation to dissipate. Allow temper it. Bring it down. Don't escalate it. And there's so many... I mean, like, look at our relationship with our children. Our children are not doing what we want them to do. They're not responding the way we want them to respond. And so... For many of us, we don't speak to our children. They live their lives one way and we are over here and we're not talking to them. Don't escalate the situation. We have one life to live and we should be living that one life for God. Make amends, reconcile, come back together. And I can give you more and more and more scenarios, but I just want you to think about your own situation. I know we like that, that, that mirror talk. And you should be talking to your mirror very often. Talk to the person in the mirror. And really discuss and be open about your feelings and where you're at. And remember that God is calling us to be better versions of ourselves. And part of that means not responding in kind. Not responding the same way, but responding in love. And this love means being quiet. This love means turning away. This love means walking away. This love means offering a hug, offering some water, offering whatever it is that does not aggress the situation, but brings it down. It's hard, but look at the times that we're in. You know, a couple of years ago, we were complaining in different um Carnival fets and so forth. Fight war was breaking out and was ending in, in had horrendous results. Somebody lost their life, somebody lost a limb or something like that. And when you hear the stories of what was happening, somebody passed and they bounced this one or they accidentally touched them or something like that. And it, it turns into a whole fight, a full brawl. And then a weapon is drawn or some, something is used as a weapon and somebody is terribly injured. And so we're talking about and saying, you know, why, why people are so heated? Why are they so aggressive and so forth? It's because we're not walking that walk with God. We're doing our own things. We're, we're, we're being very carnal and being very worldly. And so Jesus calls us to remember who we are and whose we are. He says, do not respond in kind. Do not respond like that but offer love. And I'm not saying that some situations you can do it easily. I'm just saying we have to remember and we have to apply it and try it. Walk away. Don't aggress aggression. Don't escalate the situation. Make amends and let's come back together. For he calls all of us to be one within one fold. What did he say? He says, your reward will be great. Could you imagine how good it would be if you would be talking to your children again? Love being offered to each other rather than animosity and tension. He says, your, your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. 
Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Amen. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. <clears throat> o God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service 
and live this love live this day in love for you and one another through jesus christ our lord amen and so we offer our own petitions at this time let us pray for peace among nations almighty god our heavenly father guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness, that they may become the kingdom of the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We also pray for unity within the church. O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our only Savior, the Prince of Peace, Give us grace seriously to lay to heart the great dangers we are in by our unhappy divisions. Take away all hatred and prejudice, whatever else may hinder us from godly union and concord, that as there is but one body and spirit, one hope of our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, so we may be all of one heart and of one soul united in one holy bond of truth and peace, of faith and charity, and may with one mind and one mouth glorify you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed week, everyone.